Thank you for tuning into Stepping Stones of Faith. Stepping Stones of Faith is a ministry of Claytonville United Brethren Church. Our service times are as follows. Sunday morning Sunday school starts at 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning worship starts at 10.30 a.m. If you would like to join us for any of these services, our address is 106 Elizabeth Street, Claytonville, Illinois, 60926. We hope to see you this morning. Um, we Last time we got together on the... And the videos are there if you want to go through the rest of these. They're there. Uh, we, we had talked about um, living as God had called, God has called you last week. Um, and that's an important thing uh, to, I'm not going to spoil the sermon because I already did it, but living as God has called you basically means knowing what God has called you to do and living that way and understanding what God has called you to do and trying your best to do what he's called you to do. Now today we're going to go to verse 25. If you're in the Red Bible, it's eight nine or nine eighty seven. I almost said it backwards. Um, nine eighty seven, starting in verse twenty five. It's called the unmarried and the widows. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, you don't have. It's First uh, Corinthians seven, starting in twenty five. I'm sorry, I I should have said that. Um. Paul here is, is, if you noticed in the times we've, we, we've been, here, been doing this, Paul is calling out certain things and Paul is instructing them how they should be doing things. Probably because there was an issue or there was question or there was some things that, he was, that they weren't doing properly so he had to go, in a sense, straighten them out. Okay? Now, um, chapter 7 1 Corinthians, verse 25. We're going to go down to, how long is this section? It's the end of the chapter. We'll go ahead and go down to verse 31. And we'll go from there. Verse 25, he says, Now concerning virgins, I have no command from the Lord. Yet I will give my judgment as one who has obtained mercy from the Lord to be faithful. I suppose, therefore, that this is good because of the pr present distress, that it is good for a man to remain as he is. Are you committed to a, to a wife? Do not seek to be uncommitted. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if, the, but if you marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, they will have trouble in this life. But I will, would spare you that. But this I say, brothers, the time is short. It remains that those who have wives should be as though they had none. Those who weep as though who, those who did not weep. Those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice. Those who, who buy as though they possess nothing. And those who use this world as though they did not make full use of it. For the form of this world is passing away. Now, let's go ahead and look back at this for a moment because a lot of this particular verse verses or passage kind of speaks to the passage above it. He says, Concerning virgins, I have no command from you, yet I give, give my judgment as one who has obtained mercy from the Lord to be faithful. Now, being faithful is important. What he's saying is, and in, in the previous section, he talked about if a man is cannot control his urges to get married so that he would not sin. And same with, with women, with the virgins. If you cannot control your urges, get married. And he, he goes on and he says, you know, if you have, uh, if you are married, stay married. If you're not married, 
don't get married. If you can, if you can control your urges, don't get married. If you're married, stay, stay that way. Stay of those God has called you. And that way you are not possibly causing an issue for yourself. Because as we know, Paul was not married. And Paul, was, Paul thought that was important because he didn't have the, the pull of the home life, the children, the wife. He could go and do, he was unencumbered, basically. He could do what he needed to do for the Lord. And he basically said, it says in the upper uh, sex section, that if you are married, stay married. And if you are not married, stay, stay unmarried if you can control your urges. Because if God is moving, if God is touching you and touching your situations, uh, you need to be following God, is basically what he's saying here. He goes on and he says in the, our section here, he says to remain faithful. Remain faithful in that. If, you are, if God has called you to be, uh, God called you to, to, to something and you're married, be faithful to your marriage and to your Lord. If you're single, stay single because you're un, unencumbered and you can do what God wants you to do. He says in verse 26, I suppose therefore that this is good because of the present distress that is that it is good for a man to remain as he is. Remain as you are. Are you committed, committed to a wife? Do not seek to be uncommitted. In other words, if you have a wife and God has called you, don't try to get rid of your wife to go do the Lord's work. Do it together. That's why there's so many pastors and missionaries, couples go because they both see the, the desire of God in their lives and they follow God together. He says, don't, he's basically saying, don't divorce your wife to do the work of God. Don't leave your wife to the work of God. Stay committed to your wife and do the work of God. And he goes on and he says, um, are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. Because you're unencumbered then. If you're free from a wife or a husband in today's day and age and you're ministering for God, do your calling with God first. That way you could not be encumbered. You're, you're, you're cumbered with the home life, the children, all that stuff, and it can hinder your ministry. But if you are married, the wife and the husband should be on the same page in the ministry and work together in the ministry with the children, if there is children. Does that make sense? Now, he goes on. But if you marry, you've not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. So it's not a sin to marry if you're in the ministry. Um, but make sure that the person you marry is willing to walk with you in the ministry, is what he's basically saying. You know, we know where the Bible says not to be unequally yoked. That's kind of what he's saying here. Don't be unequally yoked if you get married, you know, because you're going to be torn between the ministry of God and the home life and your, and your spouse. But to be equally yoked in the ministry if you marry. Now he says, Nevertheless, they will have trouble in this. They, they will have trouble in this life, but I would spare you that. But I say, brothers, the time is short. It remains that those who have wives should be as though they have, they had none. Now, that's what he's saying. That's what it re, that's what it sounds like. But he's saying God is saying, if you have a wife, treat your wife with respect in the ministry. Those who, those who weep, as those they do not weep. Those who rejoice, as those they do not rejoice. Those who buy, as though they possess nothing. And those who use this world as though they did not make full use of it. For the form of this world is passing away. Now, <clears throat> What does that say, basically? We want to look at what that says as for 2020. Because we're drawing closer 
we're always drawing closer to the last day. Whether that's today, whether that's 100 years from now, 1,000 years from now, every day is closer to the last day. And we should be treating it as though we understand that this world is passing away and we should cultivate a relationship with God. Whether we're single, whether we're married, whether we have things or don't have things, all of it's going to go away anyway. The possessions will be burned up. The world will be burned up. You can take your spouse with you. You can take your kids with you to heaven. You can take all of those things that matter, but you cannot take the things of this world. And as we sang, those who buy as though they, as though they possess nothing, meaning they, you don't put a lot of stock in to what you have. It doesn't mean so much. So many people that I know, and I used to be this way too, uh, a lot of emphasis was put on what you had, what you could get, what you had. That was before Christianity for me, but you know, what, what you can obtain in this life. Paul is saying all that stuff is just carnal, it is tangible, it is temporal. We need to possess this life as though we have nothing because nothing is going to go with us besides those that are with us, like our spouses, our kids. And we need to treat them as like we talked about in Sunday school as a mission field to bring them with us to heaven. I'm going to go ahead and go down. We're not running, running kind of fast here. But he says in verse 32, he says, But I prefer that you have no concern. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married cares for the things of the world, how he pleases his wife. This is what, why it's so important if you're married, if he's saying if you're married, your spouse needs to be on the same page as you are ministry-wise, so that you're so that both of them are going forward in the Lord and meeting each other's needs and not one concerned with the other and the other not doing anything for the Lord. But he's saying guard against that. If you're not married, don't get married is what he's basically saying. There is a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord and she may be holy in body and in spirit, but she who is married cares for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Same thing we just talked about, just vice versa. I say this for your own benefit, not to put any restraint upon you, but for what is proper, and that you may serve the Lord without distraction. A lot of things are distraction. And we had pretty good, pretty full day yesterday with Justin, and that was a distraction. There were people calling me, asking me about certain things that I needed to deal with, and I was like, well, you know what? We're not going to deal with this thing today. I had, you know, I had media com at the house, and what are we going to do with that? I said, we're not dealing with that today. I've got my son in the hospital. That was a distraction. Not that it was a bad distraction, but it was something that we had to deal with. And things were put, put aside because we had to deal with those things. Things like that happen. And if you're married and you're in ministry and you're, even if your wife is on the same page as you are, things happen and that becomes an issue. You put things aside to take care of the family. And if you do that, that can, Paul is saying that can be a distraction. So to be by yourself, there's no distraction, except for what you put on yourself, but there is no distraction there. Verse 36, if any man looks or thinks that he is behaving improperly toward his virgin, and if she is past the flower of her youth, the passions so require, let him do what he will. He does not sin. Let them marry. 
You see, that's important because he's basically saying if they, if she is, for lack of a better term, gone through puberty and wants to be married, wants to partake in the things that you do when you're married, get married. Don't just do those things. Don't just do those things. He says, let them marry. Nevertheless, he who stands steadfast in his heart without necessity and his power over his own will and, his, and has so decreed, decreed in the heart that he will keep his virgin does well. In other words, focus on your own ministry, focus on the ministry, focus on the things of God in your own life, whatever that is, so that that is not a distraction. He does well. Because I'm just going to say this, okay, because we're all adults, there's no kids here. When you're newly married, there are things in the marriage that people like to experience and like to experience often. And that can be a distraction for the things that God wants you to do. And I think when I say what I said, you know what I mean. But there are, there are things that happen in a marriage that can be distractions that are not family-oriented issues between the couple. That can be a distraction. And Paul is saying if you have that will and that, and that desire to keep that in check, you're doing well. You're doing well. Now, Verse 38. So then he who gives her in marriage does well, but he who gives her not in marriage does better. So in other words, leave her alone, basically. If you can control your will to not be married, you're doing better. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband lives. But if her husband dies, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, but only in the Lord. But in my judgment, she is happier if she so remains as she is. And I think that I have the Spirit of God. Now, being a widow, staying a widow. Because, well, actually, there was provision for widows and widows and children in the Old Testament. And I probably was observed here, even this, here, they would leave, I think it was the corners of their field for the widows and the orphans. I believe it was the corners. And that's how Ruth and Boaz met, was because she was out in the corners of the field threshing getting wheat to be for threshing for her and Naomi. So there was provisions for that and they're happier that way because God's providing for them and they're trusting in God more because if you're, you know, like it said, if you are uh, married, then you're concerned about your husband, what, pleasing your husband or a man pleasing his wife. God can provide and you can say well God provided for me and it wasn't by because we can take, take pride in well my husband provides this for uh, the family which it, he should but we can focus on that and not focus on God using the husband to provide for the family okay so it's it's all about if you are wherever you're at stay there in the Lord. If you're married, stay married. If you're not, stay not. If you're going to work for the Lord, you're better off. Whether you're a single or a widow, stay the way you are. Better for the it's better in the Lord. That's what Paul says. So, unmarried and widows. And it's important to understand that that in all of this we need to we need to know God. We really need to know God and we need to know what God wants for our lives. If God desires for us to be called to do something, 
and to be somewhere and to, you know, and we're, the way we are, whether we're married, unmarried, whatever, if you're married, then you can't really do it effectively unless the two individuals are on the same page. And if you're not married, you have less of a distraction to do the things of God that he's called you to do. That's basically the whole chapter of this section of scripture. Paul's laying out the, not only the law, but the, but the, uh, the, the ineffectiveness or effectiveness of being married or unmarried on your, on your relationship and your ministry. Because we were, we were talking this morning about Ezra and we were talking about how Ezra was called to teach the things of God to those who didn't know the things of God and how that can be a mission field and just like this, our lives, the way we react in our lives can be a mission field. You know, we, we you know, it says, it says in there that we are to be, we are to go forth to all Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all the areas that are, that are far off. That is, uh, that is a map of a mission field. Jerusalem is where you're at. So, in this context, if you are in a mission, mission, if you're in ministry in this context of 1 Corinthians, you can't go there unless both are in agreement because there's less distraction. So your first mission field is your home. And then if there's everyone seeing the things of God and seeing what God is doing in your lives, then you branch out. You branch out to your community and then your county and then your state and then it grows as God moves. And so basically he's saying here, if you're married, stay married, but the spouse, what I'm gleaning from this anyway, the spouse should be on the same page as you. Going forth in the ministry or going forth and just walking with God, not necessarily ministry, but walking with God in a certain way. It's important because we're not to be unequally yoked we're not to be uh, with someone who, if we're believers, who doesn't believe um, and knowingly getting married to someone who doesn't believe. I mean, sometimes we get married and someone believes when we're married, but then they fall away. That's a total different story than knowingly marrying someone who doesn't believe. Because then that can, that's, that, more times than not, in my experience with couples, the one who doesn't believe drags the other one down with them. That's how it works. And it's, it's, it's what I've seen in my years of ministry. That's what I've seen with couples. If someone doesn't believe, or, and they married them knowing they didn't believe, thinking they're going to save them, they end up going down with the ship, so to speak. So Paul is saying here, you know, if you're married, stay married, but the understanding that I'm gleaning from this is that, every, that the spouse and the husband should be, the husband and wife should be on the same page as far as walking with the Lord goes and staying that way and doing what the Lord has called you to do. Because if you're not married, um, if you are married, then, then the spouse that isn't, that's a distraction for your own relationship. Okay, so... That's why it says being unmarried, if you're unmarried, stay that way. Don't seek a wife because you are following in God and you can't be pulled away from that. Okay? Does that make sense? So some of the things I want us to look at today in the Lord is questions we need to ask ourselves is number one this, am I following God the way he wants me to. And then I want you to do something else. This is not a question. This is just a challenge. If you have a spouse, pray for your spouse. 
to have a better relationship with God. Maybe they do have a good relationship God with God, but pray for them to have a better one. If you have children, I know Ralph's got children, grandchildren, and Brenda's got children. I want you to be praying for Wayne, and Wayne, I want you praying for Brenda, but I also want you to be praying for your children and your grandchildren if you don't have a spouse. Pray for them, that they would have a greater relationship with God than they do right now later on in, in life. So those are two things I want you to do. Does that make sense? You might say, well, Pastor, I already pray for my kids and my grandkids. I already pray for my spouse. Well, keep doing it if you're doing it. Keep doing it and do it with more fervor, all right? Does that make sense? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this word. Pray that you'd bless it, bless us in it. Help us to understand your word today. Minister to us, give us strength and undergird us. Father, I pray that, Lord, you would just um, touch each and every one of us today. Give us blessings, minister to us. Help us to pray for each other, our spouses, our kids, our grandkids. Help us to do those things. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, minister through that as well and bring revival to our families. And Lord, we thank you for that. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to Stepping Stones of Faith. I pray that you find value in this content. You can also find an audio podcast of this program on all the major podcasting platforms. Just type Stepping Stones of Faith into the podcast search bar. Once again, I'm Pastor Josh. Thank you for joining me today.